Hello everyone, this is Mike Check 95 and now we're at a good stopping point for the RDW highlights. The last few matches that we have covered have been the early days of RDW. Now, to kind of go over some of the uh, events of the early days, uh, there wasn't really that many really big storylines going in at the start. Uh, mainly the first thing that was happening was the um, kind of semi-tournament that we had going on for the RDW World Championship and that we didn't really have a title for the league at the time until probably about a year later after we've had a good number of matches that happened. So if we take a look back at the first few of the early days we had Krieger Margin versus Bam Flesner and then we also had Harvey Beardman versus Venom. Now these four superstars here were actually the founding fathers of Red Dust Wrestling and we were going to have a singles match uh, a little bit after that to decide for the RDW World Championship but I guess due to I'm guessing scheduling and booking and you know people wanting to do the match in general uh, that took about about a year to get done <laughs> for those fans who uh, were waiting for that finals match or even knew that there was a tournament behind the scenes going on uh, I do apologize for that um, happening and also on top of the fact that we never actually did record the finals for the uh, world championship because it was just if you look at the RDW history um, without any context in between one day there was no uh, RDW world champion and then the next day suddenly there was a RDW world champion that's why um, after Krieger margin versus Harvey Beardman 2 I had jumped in and filled in some of the uh, unrecorded uh, I guess house shows that we did with the the triple singles matches that uh, Venom had gone through, taking on the likes of Cosmos and then Gregor Margin and then Harvey Beardman all in the same day. And then a little bit later, we had uh, Harvey Beardman uh, challenging Bam Flesner in the finals of the tournament for the RDW World Championship, which I had stated in a previous video that that match was done in a matter of seconds and Bam Flesner was crowned. Uh, you're a world champion that was honestly probably the first time we've ever had a match go for less than five minutes because for the longest time we mainly did like highlights of the matches before we went into a uh, full feature length matches the really main big storyline that was going on at the very very beginning was just that tournament and then just uh the superstar solidifying themselves and then we also had our very first multi-man match with the likes of Banff Lesnar, Fatty Ogre, Krieger Margin, and Venom uh, in between the events of the tournament rounds and the championship match and we also had uh, two other guys uh, Fatty Ogre as I said previously and Cosmos also uh, joined the ranks of RDW uh, during this time period and uh, this is was when where like there wasn't really uh, too much growth going on um, there really wasn't a, a vision for um, RDW also at the time as well because I myself personally didn't really see this as a product of something that we could grow upon it was around the time of when Vatty Ogre won the world championship was when I started noticing that we could potentially grow this into something but it the seeds weren't planted in just yet it was just kind of we were still kind of like trying to gain our traction on the tracks when it comes to that it was kind of like later on towards main event two because uh, main event one was our first ever a number one contendership match for the RDW World Championship and it was also the first ever recorded slashed televised in quotes uh, match that uh, Venom and Cosmos has had but on the books this was the second match they ever had so going into this uh, this was the um, 
second set of trilogies that were going on in RDW because of course the first trilogy was Harvey Bearman and Krieger Margin at the end of this era they were one and one but going into this match uh, we were uh, of course trying to find a number one contender for the world championship because uh, Bam Flesner had just won the title and then he defended it three different times at the same night uh, actually no two different times because he defeated Harvey Beerman for the ch championship and then defended it against Krieger Margin and Venom also in quick fashions that same night as I'm trailing off a little bit I apologize just trying to like recall everything in my memory when it comes to the early days because it's been quite a long time since I actually sat down and actually talked about this stuff. I would say out of all of these matches that I would probably say I enjoyed the most was the number one contendership match between Venom and Cosmos because uh, the two of them uh, would actually work really well together. Uh, I had a really fun time every time I went up against uh, Cosmos in the the living room ring. And our matches tend to last about 16 to 20 minutes, usually maybe about 30 minutes, depending on how our endurances were that day. But I've always had a great and fantastic time wrestling Cosmos in matches like that. And if Even if it's just like a non-title match or a title match or a contendership match, it was always fun wrestling Cosmos because he had a very similar body structure that I did. He had a very similar endurance and stamina uh, ability like I did. And we were both very unorthodox with our uh, movesets. But that was one of my favorite matches. I would also say that the first ever televised or recorded match for the World Championship was also kind of one of my favorites as well. <laughs> because, like, it really showed and displayed the power and dominance that uh, Bam Flesner had over the landscape that was Red Dust Wrestling. Because, like, as from a management standpoint and as a wrestler standpoint, I really didn't know if there was really anybody who could defeat Lesnar at the time because just for the sheer fact that, like, he was so strong and powerful and he really showed it when it came to uh, the matches we had in the living room ring. And just the fact that his dominance just ragdolling around Cosmos in that match was just pure uh, chaos and entertainment to my eyes. <laughs> Uh, not to say that like I enjoyed like just Cosmos getting the, the shit kicked out of him, but it just like safety always comes first. But um, yeah, like that, it was just fun just seeing Cosmos with his endurance and speed trying to outsmart and take down uh, Bam Flesner, but he always had a counter to every uh, speed attempt or every like endurance attempt that Cosmos had thrown against him. So that's another one of my favorite matches. And quite frankly, my other favorite match would have to go to the second world title defense that was televised, technically the fifth title defense that Banff Lesnar had against uh, Fatty Ogre. Because at this point, uh, Lesnar has defended the championship against everyone besides him. And Fatty Ogre had made a, a grand return to the RDW ring at this time because he hasn't really wrestled since uh, May of 2015. So when he came back, I was like, hmm, maybe we can try something with this. Like, maybe he can be the one that can defeat him. Because I really went into this match because I was the one actually recording this match. Uh, not sure if he would be able to beat uh, Bam Flesner. Because, like, all of us knew how strong and how powerful he was. And just, like, the sheer amount of, like, intelligence he had when it came to everything. But after, like, a grueling, like, 15, 20, 30 minutes of a match, just watching as I'm recording this, like, the entire room erupted when uh, Fatty Ogre had defeated him for the world title. Because, like, I, for one, 
didn't think that he had it in him to beat him. Like, I really thought that he was going to get crushed and destroyed like everyone else had in um, Van Flesner's way. But he was able to slip in, like, this little crafty arm bar in the tie-up that I'm going to show on the screen right here because it's really hard to tell from this angle. But he was able to get a, a crafty arm bar tied in there and made him tap out for the title. And just like the sheer excitement that you can hear uh, behind the theme music that like, holy shit, holy shit, like somebody has defeated and dethroned uh, Bam Flesner for the title. Like no one, especially me, didn't really know that like that could happen. And like I said uh, earlier in, the, in this video that like this was kind of when that the seeds weren't completely planted yet, but, like, I started to think, like, maybe this could be something because, like, we ha we now have, like, an even playing field when it comes to all this stuff. Like, we had the two big guys with Harvey Beardman and uh, Banff Lesnar. We had the two uh, technical uh, and crafty, uh, savvy wrestlers out of Krieger Margin and Fatty Ogre on top of a lot of the wrestling training for Krieger Margin. And then we had the um, unorthodox and just like tough and full of endurance wrestlers out of like Venom, myself, and Cosmos. So it was, it, it really felt like an even playing field at this point. But it was just like filming these early day matches were a lot of fun. Like, Again, there was really no seriousness put behind it. Like, we were just kind of, like, messing around and trying to see, um, I guess, who was better at just wrestling one another. But it was just mainly for fun. Like, no really big storylines going in. I mean, besides the World Championship thing and, I guess, the kind of start of a small little rivalry between um, Cosmos and Venom and a tiny one with Beardman and Krieger Margin. But... Other than that, like, it was just, it was all for fun. We were just goofing around, uh, just throwing each other around like rag dolls or just putting each other in arm bars or leg locks. Like, it was all for fun. But uh, the next uh, era that we're going to cover is I like to call the Summer of Ogre X90. Now, to kind of give a bit of a preface, this was kind of when um, we had a couple more debuts come in and it was just an entire summer of just complete dominance when it comes to Fatty Ogre and PX90 and it was this era that really opened my eyes that I could really make something out of this and actually say hey like this could gain a following this could gain a fan base this could be something but we're going to cover that when we get to it and this is actually the era where we had our uh first couple of injuries that come in like nothing super severe but like a couple of minor injuries that came in <laughs> during this part but um hopefully you enjoyed this kind of like behind the scenes like uh eye opener when it comes to uh, the highlights hopefully you guys are enjoying the highlight coverage that i'm doing so far um if you want to see more content on this channel besides the rdw highlights we also have plenty of other of plethora of videos uh just subscribe to the channel mic check productions uh be sure to like and share with your friends and everything there's also social media links in our uh, description box down below that you can talk and share ideas with us like facebook instagram and twitter there's also a discord down there that you can actually talk to us and like reach out and actually share your thoughts uh, when it comes to all the content and then we also have a, a spotify podcast that is out there called the mic checked podcast um it's kind of currently been put on hold for the time being because of like other stuff that's personally going on like i'm currently getting ready to move and whatnot but like it's still out there i'm gonna get some of those episodes out but it's it's there if you want to sit there and listen to the couple of the older episodes i'm gonna have to meet up with the guys and um get a couple more episodes knocked out in, within the next month or so. But this is Mike Check 95 Hopefully you enjoyed the coverage again so far of RDW highlights. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be continually uploading on this channel with the RDW videos. And that's going to be the slow uh, deletion of the RDW YouTube channel. Because once everything on that channel is completely wiped and gone, 
it's all going to be on this channel so that way it's not going to be erased from history but again mike check 95 signing out <laughs>